Are you struggling with organizing your Apple Home Kit home? In this video, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to better organize your home and make it easier for you to live with your smart house. Hey, Chris Young here from HomeKit Geek, the channel where we bring you new smart home content every single week, focusing on Apple HomeKit, Amazon, Madam A, Google, and whatever else I find interesting. If you find that interesting, do me a favor, consider subscribing and ring that bell to be notified when new videos are added. You could ask me for Canadian expressions. In this video, I promise to tell you a better way to organize your HomeKit home. But to do that, we're gonna have to go through some terminology first. So bear with me and hopefully you'll learn a little bit more on how things are organized and that'll let you organize your home a little bit better. For step one, we're gonna cover accessories. Accessories is like this plug, smart plug, uh, physical thing. You can hit it, you can touch it, you plug it in a wall, all those kinds of things. But each accessory has a list of services associated with it. And those services might be a light, it might be um, a plug, it might be uh, an internal service like firmware update, it might be an external service like turning on a fan, any of those things, right? So it's a logical thing that you're gonna control. So every physical accessory might have multiple services associated with it. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about the other components that we have. So within HomeKit, we have four major groupings. First, you have your home, of which you could have multiple. So if you've got a home and a cabin, a chalet, that might be a reason you have multiple homes. You also have groups, which is a logical grouping of a bunch of devices together. You have rooms, which is a logical grouping of physical devices together. And you have zones. A zone is a logical grouping of rooms together as an entity. So let's look a little deeper into all of those to see if we can make this a little bit more clear for you. So the most obvious one we're gonna talk about is rooms. Rooms, it's a pretty simple thing. You put physical accessories into rooms, right? You cannot split out the services from those accessories, so we won't even talk about that right now, but you take those physical accessories, a plug, and you plug it into a wall, which happens to be in a room. Most of the time we think of this as a physical thing, but it doesn't have to be that. So if you've got an, a main floor, for instance, that is an open concept, there are no walls, no barriers between the different spaces, but each part of this open space has a specific use that you think of it as a separate room. For instance, a kitchen, right? You might have a kitchen off in one corner, you might have a dining room in another corner, you might have a living room in another corner. So each one of those can be represented by a logical room. You may be tempted to think of this as a physical thing, but you don't have to, which is one of those tricks that I really want you guys to think about. So don't go overboard, but feel free to play around with this. Let me give you a few examples. So I have an open space on my main floor shown here. In this open space, I have a kitchen, I have a dining room, I have a living room defined, and those it's kind of easy to understand, but I also have a Logitech Circle 2 camera on a window mount pointing out to my side yard. So the camera is physically in the room, the same room that would be my dining room, but the camera I have specifically put into a separate room called side yard. That way I can easily go into an application like HomeCam or go into my Apple TV, go into my home app, and I can see what's going on in the home yard. I can ask questions of Siri as to what's going on in the side yard. So I think that helps to understand rooms. It's a pretty easy concept. So the next thing we're gonna look at is groups. So previous to iOS 13, devices, accessories, as they were brought into Apple HomeKit, they were, um, they were split out. So even though it was a plug with a light on it, they were split out as multiple devices. So Apple made a change that they put these back together as a single device. But that's really more of a grouping function. You can break those tiles back out. That's not a hard thing to do. But there are other groups in here. You have the ability to put lights together. So for instance, if you've got three or four LifeX or Hue or Ikea light bulbs, for instance, and they're all plugged into the same lamp, you might want to group those together so you can ask Siri to turn the lamp on or off, right? So this is a really easy way to use groups. But there are also a lot of hidden groups. So if you have something like the Home Plus application shown here, you can see as we scroll through this list that what we're really doing is we have these hidden groups that get created automatically. And this is really important as you start to understand context. So if you have a HomePod in the same room as this particular device, you can just say, turn off the lights. The HomePod knows that it's in that room. And if I say, turn off the lights, automatically in the background, Siri basically appends the room name in front of lights. So if that HomePod happens to be in the master bedroom and you say, uh, Siri, turn off the lights, what she will hear is really, hey Siri, turn off the master bedroom lights, which is a group that's been automatically created in the background. 
So one of the things that I think is very underutilized is the zones concept within many people's home kit homes. A zone is nothing more than a logical group of rooms. But where zones comes in handy is it again, there's these auto grouping mechanisms in the background. So as I said, you can only put a physical accessory in a single room, but maybe you wanna be able to address it multiple ways. Zones allows you to do that. It creates a hierarchical relationship. If I create a zone called basement and I put all the rooms that are physically in my basement inside that, I can then say, Siri, turn off the basement lights. And she will then do that for me. They don't actually have to have that kind of physical same proximity though. You can also put all the bedroom lights together and say, Siri, turn off the bedroom lights. Using zones, groups, and rooms, all of this is an effective way to create a much more natural voice experience where you're asking things in the way you would if you were asking your kids to go turn off the lights. Hey, go turn off the, the, the basement lights. Go turn off the downstairs lights. And what's cool about this is any room can be in multiple zones at the same time. So if you have an upstairs with bedrooms and a downstairs with bedrooms, you could create an upstairs group. Upstairs would have all the bedrooms upstairs, perhaps bathrooms, hallway lights, any of those things. And if you say, turn off the upstairs lights, all of those lights would turn off. So alternately, I can take all of the bedrooms and put those in another zone called bedrooms. If I was to ask Siri, turn off all the bedroom lights, all the bedroom lights would turn off. One caveat to watch for is to be clear about what you're wanting to do. If you were to say, turn off the basement, everything in the basement would turn off, including plugs and lights, purifiers, all of that would be turned off because it's a command to send off to the entire zone. So every group in that zone would get an off command. If all you wanted was lights, you have to use the trigger word lights and say, turn the basement lights off. And then Siri will automatically pick that up in the background. This is a really cool way to use voice in a much more natural way to control your smart home if you're living in the Apple HomeKit ecosystem. So the last thing I wanted to do is to give you a real world example. This is my current setup as far as zones. I have upstairs, outside, bedrooms, basement, downstairs, and main floor. And if you look closely, you'll see downstairs and basement are identical. We use both of those words to refer to the basement, the, the downstairs of our house. So um, being able to have both of them in here as a zone means that I can either say, shut off the downstairs lights, shut off the basement lights, and it just works, no problem. I've also got bedrooms grouped together here. And of course, the three main physical spaces of upstairs, main floor, and basement, all of that is put together as well as outside. I could do a backyard and include, um, you know, different areas of my backyard if, if I want to split out my deck, those kinds of things. But again, you don't want to go too overboard here. So hopefully this has given you a much better design on how to organize your house, how to plan out your Apple HomeKit house, and allow you to interact more naturally from a vocal standpoint. Naming conventions are super important here, but you wanna use something that is common to everybody. Again, you can have multiple zones. So if some people call it the downstairs, some people call it the basement, create two zones with the exact same rooms in it. That's absolutely fine. Play around with this and definitely let me know in the details below if this was helpful and some of the challenges that you've seen, and we'll try to work through those together. If you haven't subscribed already, do me a favor, ring that bell, hit that subscribe. Likes, shares, always appreciated. We'll see you guys soon.